Today, we're going to take a look at seven reasons why carpet cleaning businesses fail. And you're not going to want to miss number seven, because it's probably the number one reason why most small businesses fail. First off, let's start with some statistics, shall we? Did you know that about half of all small businesses fail within the first five years, with many of those failing in the first couple of years? And nine out of 10 will fail before the 10th year. So how do we keep your carpet cleaning business from becoming one of those statistics? Well, there is power in learning from others. So let's take a look at these seven reasons most carpet cleaning businesses fail. Number one, having an employee mindset versus a business owner mindset. Remember, you are creating a business, not just a job. And way too many small business owners approach their business from a job mentality. Yes, you are doing carpet cleaning work, but you are a small business owner who owns a carpet cleaning business. It is critical that you identify as the business owner and not as the carpet cleaner. For many of you, you are the only person in your business. Therefore, you wear the employee hat as well as the business owner hat. So it is easy to get lost in the employee mindset. I'm sure you have heard of the saying, working in your business versus on your business. The employee works in the business while the business owner works on the business. When a business owner spends all of their time working in the business, then the business begins to fail due to no one taking the reins on where the business is going. And more importantly, no one is looking out for the profitability of the business. The second problem with having an employee mindset versus a business owner mindset comes when you are making decisions. An employee will solve the problem of the moment, but a business owner needs to solve not only today's current problem, but think of a longer term solution. Business owners are constantly improving the business's processes. When the business owner is thinking like an employee, the business tends to just exist versus having a clear vision on where it is going and focusing on constant improvement. Mistake number two, paying yourself incorrectly in the business. As I just mentioned, you're wearing two hats in your business. Therefore, you are also being paid two different ways in the business, especially if you are doing employee work in the business, which most of you typically are. In the beginning, most small business owners tend to pocket the money that's left over at the end of the day after paying their cost. Later, they tend to take a flat monthly fee out of the business. However, just keep in mind, these are employee wages. The business owner you is only paid out on the profits the business makes. Just because you're taking money each month doesn't mean you are being paid as a business owner as well as an employee. Businesses fail when they focus on this employee income versus creating a business that pays you both as an employee and a business owner. The carpet cleaning businesses that fail have typically created a job for themselves versus creating a solid business. It is critical that you pay yourself a fair wage as an employee in your business, but it is just as critical that you focus on the profitability of the business and creating an owner's wage as well. It is only after you are able to pay yourself both ways that you are considered a successful business that can beat the odds, which leads us to our third most common reason carpet cleaning businesses tend to fail. Mistake number three, pricing their services incorrectly. A huge mistake that carpet cleaning businesses make is how they price their services. When our pricing is off, we tend to make less money for the business. Keep in mind this simple formula for your business. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. This is the basic flow of money through your business. And since your sales is the first part of our formula, it is safe to say that it all starts with pricing correctly. Way too many carpet cleaning businesses undervalue their services, costing them profits. They fail to account for the right amount of costs, expenses, but also that employee wage for the owner as well. But profits aren't the only thing that bad pricing impacts. When you are priced incorrectly, you will end up working longer and longer hours chasing new sales to pay bills, and soon burnout will set in. When this happens, so does the realization that it was easier to just work for someone else. After struggling to make ends meet, working 60, 70 hours a week, the carpet cleaning business owner closes the business. The goal of pricing isn't to be the cheapest. This isn't a race to the bottom. It is about charging correctly for the value you provide. While the main job of a carpet cleaner is to clean the floor, not all of them can do it the same way that you can. It could be your skill level, your service, your hours, or any special sauce that you bring to the table. But you need to know your value. Stand out above the others and charge accordingly. 
This isn't a pricing video, so if you want to learn more about pricing, I'll put a link below in the show notes as I have other videos that talk about pricing. Please make sure that you are pricing correctly. You really need to make sure that you are being paid as both the carpet cleaner and the business owner. It is the single biggest mistake many small business owners make. Pricing is critical, so please spend time on it. Mistake number four, not being crystal clear on who your ideal customer is. Yes, you want to serve every customer that has a need that you can solve. And you want to make sure that everybody uses your business over your competition. But if you approach it this way, you're going to end up serving no one. Even worse, you're going to get every person under the sun that only wants your cheap services because you haven't set the stage for who you would love to serve. Think of it this way. There are carpet cleaning businesses that specialize in all different types of things that they can do. Some use water, some don't use water, some clean upholstery, some don't clean upholstery. Some have big machines, some have little tiny machines. Some you have to stay away from your home for four hours and some you can go back in in an hour. Each thing that you do provides a specific need and solves a specific pain point. So what you wanna do is you wanna target the customers whose pain point you best serve. For example, if you're going to specialize in doing upholstery, not all carpet cleaners can do that. Therefore, you can charge a lot more for that specific service because fewer people do it. Same thing with cleaning tile. Not all equipment can clean tile correctly. That might be a specific area that you decide to target as well. I've looked at a few carpet cleaning businesses and I know cleaning the carpet is probably where you make the least amount of money due to the specials that are ran. Where you make the money in a carpet cleaning business are those tile jobs and those specialty things that you can also do, such as upholstery or focusing on getting pet smells out of their carpet. By focusing on those people, you'll knock out a lot of your competition because they don't help those people. So make sure you focus your attention and your energy on those you want to serve. All right, the fifth reason carpet cleaning businesses fail is they expand beyond their local community way too soon. The average business has thousands of homes within five to 10 miles of their location. However, in a bid to grow the business, they mistakenly chase 30 to 60 minutes out of their area, thus driving up their costs, the wear and tear on their vehicles and lost jobs due to being on the road. Another thing way too many business owners try to do is jump into a new city and try to expand to get more business when the reality is there's plenty of business close to home. Just think about how many homes are within a 15 minute drive of where you are currently. I'm pretty sure all of them have some flooring in their home with a bunch of them dying to get it cleaned. But a typical carpet cleaning business only helps out about three to 5% of their local community. What if you could get that up to 15%? That's more than doubling your business and sometimes tripling your business. Trust me, there is plenty of business in your hometown. Quit spending time, energy, and resources, and not to mention gas and wear and tear on your vehicle to go everywhere under the sun. Businesses fail when they chase business that does not help their bottom line, and business outside of your immediate area comes at a cost. And while you might gain more sales, those extra costs hit your profitability. And as we've discussed, without profit, the business is going to fail. Focus on a smaller area and I promise you word of mouth will get out and you will start getting other people that want you to come clean their home. Especially if you focus on that ideal customer that we were discussing earlier and how you can help them out. All right, the number six reason why carpet cleaning businesses fail is poor communication with their customers. One of the most overlooked items that kill a small business is poor communication. How many times have you and a customer butted heads over something that turned out to be a communication problem? But this type of communication problem isn't the only issue that can hurt your carpet cleaning business. How often are you staying in touch with your past clients? This is a great way to encourage returning customers and guarantee future sales. Not to mention top of mind awareness when their friends call needing a referral. Ever call a business and never get a call back? How often does this happen in your business? Do you have a message that tells them that you're going to call them back within 24 hours? And more importantly, you actually do it. How do you handle emergency situations? Granted, there's not a lot of emergencies with carpet cleaning, but I promise you there's going to be some people that are going to reach out because to them, it is an emergency. There are tons of businesses that have websites that have an email for potential clients to reach out to them. Yet this email doesn't work or no one ever checks it or reaches back out to you. This happens to me all of the time. Heck, I have attempted to use small businesses that do not respond to either their email or their phone calls, and they wonder why their business isn't making any money and will soon fail. I just watched this with another business. By the way, 
Poor communication happens with employees as well. Owners failing to communicate clear expectations to their team often will lead to loss in business and profits. Good communication also helps you stand out from your competition as well. I love all the business I have received over the years due to my competition being horrible at communication. It has led to thousands of dollars in my pocket. Never underestimate the power of good communication to lead to more profits and more business. Okay, the biggest reason carpet cleaning businesses fail is found in the seventh reason, which is not knowing their business numbers. Okay, folks, let me tell you, businesses fail for a variety of reasons, and one of the biggest reasons is due to not knowing their business numbers. If a business owner knows their business numbers, they are more likely to react to problems way before they become profit killers. They are smarter about how they spend their money and their business's profits, and they ensure that they get a return on the money that they spend. They tend to price better, and they tend not to chase sales that they shouldn't be chasing. Earlier, I shared my number one calculation that I think all small business owners need to know. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. This is the basis of all business numbers. It is the flow of money through your business. Understanding your profit and loss statement ensures that you know where your hard-earned money is going, and it is the business's report card. Businesses fail when they shoot from the hip day after day without looking at the numbers and understanding what is the best business decision to make. Everything you do in your business is tied to your numbers. This doesn't mean you need to memorize anything other than sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. A calculator is your best friend and you can look up anything else that you need to know. But there is a power in looking at your business's trends. What does each March look like? How are your sales spread out across the months? What are they telling you? When should you be preparing for the next season? The list goes on and on. And in a carpet cleaning business, your business tends to jump September and October for folks that want to get their homes ready for the family that's coming over. Use the information from the past to maximize each season. Want to purchase a new piece of equipment? Great. Use your numbers to determine what type of return you need to get off that equipment just to break even. Just like the words in a book tell you a story, so do the numbers of your business. You just want to learn the story that your numbers are trying to tell you. I know you want to run a very profitable carpet cleaning business. Remember, your business has one job, and that is to be profitable. Yes, you need to provide a great service with amazing customer service, but in order for the business not to fail, you must also make money. Your business numbers are the key to you not making simple mistakes that can lead to your carpet cleaning business closing its doors. And by the way, tied to your business numbers is paying your taxes. Please make sure you have a great understanding of your taxes because you have to pay those taxes. There's no one paying them for you. And part of knowing your business numbers is knowing how much money you need to pay to the government. I've watched many a business owner get in serious trouble because they fail to set aside money every single month to pay their taxes. Your business numbers will help you do that. Listen, I could list out 20 reasons why carpet cleaning businesses fail, but if you focus on these seven areas, you will give yourself a fighting chance to beat the statistics and have a thriving business. And if you want more videos to help you with your carpet cleaning business, don't forget to hit subscribe, click that bell, and don't forget to check out one of these other videos showing on the screen.